as you have seen in previous examples, a basis for subspace is not a new. You can make many choices. You may have noticed though that the number of factors in a basis for a fixed or given subspace is always the same. So you can choose which factors you put in your basis as long as they are independent and span your subspace, but you cannot choose the total number of factors. But why is that? Well, intuitively, this might be clear to you. If you do not use enough factors, you cannot reach all points in the subspace. And if you put too many, the set becomes dependent. But our intuition might be wrong. In this video, you will see that your intuition is correct in this particular case. The number of factors in any base for a given subspace is the same. Nice to know, of course. There are, however, two more reasons to take a closer look. We will make extensive use of the properties of a basis, an important but difficult concept for us, so we will get some better feeling for a basis. And secondly, this is an example how to give a proof which is a bit harder. So, enough reasons why the subject is interesting for us. Let us get started. Suppose I have two bases for subspace, a basis B1, consisting of U1 up to UR, and a subspace B2, consisting of V1 to Vs. And suppose S is bigger than R. Suppose my second basis contains more factors. Then we will show that this equation over here has a non-trivial solution, which means that it is not a basis after all, so that S cannot be bigger than R. So the idea of the argument is to show that if we have one basis, that another basis cannot contain more factors. And of course you can reverse that argument, so if you would have a basis with two factors with three factors and you know the one with two factors is a basis, then the one with three factors cannot be a basis. So it shows us all bases have the same number of factors. But how are we going to do that? Well, the proof is kind of messy. So what are we going to do? Well, first of all, we know that B1 is a basis. That means that we can express V1, V2 up to Vs in terms of the factors U1 up to Ur. So I can write V1 as a linear combination of U1, U2 up to Ur, and V2, etc. up to Vs. So we express all factors of B2 in terms of the factors of B1. And then we want to show that this equation over here has a non-trivial solution. So what are we going to do? We substitute this V1 over here, this V2 we substitute it over here, up to the Vs which we substitute over there. So we get a huge expression, the dots over here, dots over there, dots over there, because lots is missing, it's over here, uh, equals zero, equals zero. I want to show that this uh, leads to a non-trivial solution of C1 up to Cs. Well, let's order this a bit. Let us see what terms we have with U1. Well, here we have a U1, so uh, A11 times C1. And here we have a U1, uh, A21 times C2, terms over here. And it goes on and on and on, up till the last term over here, which is a, uh, CS times AS1, which is a term over here. And all terms in between. So uh, a3 1 times c3, uh, a4 1 times c4, etc., etc. And then we do the same for the u2, we do the same for the u3, etc. To enter the ur, what do we have for ur? Well, here we have a ur term, uh, a1r times c1, so this term over here. Here we have a ur, uh, a2 r times c2, over here, up to the last term over here. A is R times Cs. So we have A1 R times C1, A2 R times C2, A3 R times C3, etc. up to A is R times Cs equals zero. 
uh, now we know that B1 is a basis. So that means that U1 up to UR, those factors are independent. So we have a huge equation, U1 times a number, a11 is a number, C1 is a number, so the product is a number, plus another number, plus another number. So between the brackets over here we have a number. So we have number times U1, plus number times U2, plus until a number times UR equals zero. But since the U1, U2, U3, etc. are independent, we know that all those big numbers between the brackets need to be zero. This factor equation only has a trivial solution. So all those numbers here, a11 times c1 plus a21 times c2, etc., up to as1 times cs, has to be equal to zero. And the same holds for all the other numbers. And that leads to a linear system. But now we have r equations, we have r weights in front of all of the ur we have weights, so r equations. And we have C1 up to Cs, we have S unknowns. But now we have more variables than equations. Only R equations, but R was smaller than S, so I have more variables than unknowns. So I have a very broad augmented matrix. That means that we will well, we we'll do some row reduction, we will always have free variables. So that means that we will regardless of what the, the weights are uh, exactly, we will always find some non-trivial solutions because we end up with free variables. But since we have a non-trivial solution for the C1 up to Cs, that means that we have a non-trivial solution over here, and that means that the set over here is dependent, so B2 cannot be a basis. And that concludes the proof why uh, S cannot be bigger than R.